Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to the beginning of our unit on statistics. Statistics is the science of the collecting, organizing, and interpreting data. Data are facts or information. Statistics includes doing experiments and surveys, often asking some questions. Statistics can be used to understand and help solve scientific problems or problems with a population. A population can be as big as all Ethiopians or as small as your class of students. For this unit, we will define statistics as the science of collecting, organizing, presenting, analyzing, and interpreting of data or qualitative information in order to draw conclusions. Today, we will first learn about qualitative and quantitative data. Next, we will learn about discrete and continuous variables. If you are ready to begin, we will start by talking about qualitative data. We have qualitative data when we classify a sample or population by its attributes that cannot be measured or expressed by numbers. An example of qualitative data would be the colors in an oil painting or the kind of bike your friend has. We have quantitative data when we assign a real number to each member of the population under study. An example of quantitative data would be the size of that oil painting or the weight of your friend's bike. I have a video that might help you to understand how qualitative data is different from quantitative data. How does your garden grow? If your garden is anything like our feature garden in Alaska, then it grows big. Alaska's a big state, and vegetables there grow to record-breaking sizes. A 19-pound carrot and a zucchini bigger than a baseball bat. Of course, the long summer days may be part of the secret, but not the whole secret. 
Alaska has a colorful history of farming and agricultural projects, and two gentlemen with family roots in the valley are aiming for the ultimate prize. The 100-pound cabbage. That's a lot of coleslaw. The Dinkle brothers, Gene, a retired science teacher, and Don, a horticulturist, have been growing their incredible edibles for years, surprising the judges each year at the Alaska State Fair. Something to be proud of, the kararabi right here. This is a new world record. But how do they manage to grow these giant veggies? Recording qualitative and quantitative data helps. An example of qualitative data could be the type of soil and the nutrients they add to it. Examples of quantitative data could be the amount of rainfall and the number of sunny days these plants enjoy, as well as the obvious one, how long or heavy the resulting vegetable is. Although these two brother farmers grow unusual vegetables, their record keeping is typical for farmers who seek an award-winning harvest year after year. This is the cabbage that I'm pretty sure I'll take to the fair. Uh, it's huge. I measured it before and it goes about 72 inches, about six foot across. The head itself is not large. It could spend a little more time uh, uh, growing, but uh, it's pretty mature. It's a huge cabbage and it's just gorgeous. Let's load it up and take it in. Did you notice, students, it is easiest to understand the difference by understanding how we use different kinds of data? We will now complete our first activity. If you wanted to grow the biggest coffee plant possible, what sort of data would you need to think about and write down? First, think about what data you would need to write down and make a list. Next, divide your list into qualitative data and quantitative data. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I am sure you came up with a number of examples of qualitative data, such as the type of soil the coffee plants are in. I am also sure you came up with several examples of quantitative data, such as how big are the coffee berries. We will now do another activity. For this activity, thinking about your classmates will help. As we learned, statistics are used by businesses. For example, a food seller opening a new store would want to know what his customers would buy so he could sell as much food as possible. If you wanted to open a store in your class, it would help to know the height, weight, and sex of the students if you wanted to sell clothes. You would need to know the religion of the students if you wanted to sell food. Which of these are examples of qualitative data and which are examples of quantitative data? Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I am sure you decided that sex and religion are examples of qualitative data, which means height and weight are examples of quantitative data. Now we will see how collecting data can help businesses. Using sex as an example, write down how many males and how many females there are in your class. Then, decide whether a store in your class should have more clothes for men or for women. Students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. What did you decide? If your class has more males than females, your store should have more clothes for males. If your class has more females than males, your store should have more clothing for females. If your class has equal numbers of females and males, 
then your store should have equal amounts of clothes for males and females. This is how statistics are used today. In the next part of our lesson, we will describe the difference between discrete and continuous variables. A variable is a number that is used to describe something which can be measured, but can also vary. The opposite of a variable is a constant, something that does not change. Here is an example. In your class, the height of different students is not the same. When you write down the height of every student using numbers, the numbers vary. Height is a variable. There are two kinds of variables. A discrete variable is a variable that takes the form of whole numbers. We get discrete variables by counting. For example, every class has students, but the number of students in every class can vary. It is different from one class to another. A continuous variable is a variable that takes all real values between two given real values. This means it can have an infinite number of values between any two points. The number of students in each classroom is a discrete variable. There can only be whole numbers. Two students, three students, four students, and so on. The height of the students is an example of a continuous variable. A student can be 166 centimeters tall, 166.1 centimeters tall, 166.2 centimeters tall. The variables between 166 centimeters tall and 167 centimeters tall are infinite. Here, we see two types of variables on a graph. The number of boys is a discrete variable because there is no such thing as 1.5 boys. The height of the boys is a continuous variable. Congratulations, students. You now understand the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. You also understand discrete and continuous variables, things you will need to remember while you learn about statistics. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.